Good evening, everyone. MSc Management is a highly competitive international program. Recently, we discussed Manchester University's MSc Management program. The majority of you were interested in learning more about MSc Management at other UK universities. So here we are today. We'll be discussing UCL's MSc Management program. Welcome to ULTV Student Diaries. I'm Shifali Shivasta, Marketing and Communication Manager at University Living. At UCL, a learn how to learn approach is used to facilitate the program's taught modules, research, training to promote lifelong learning. To discuss this more in detail, we are joined by Shreya Gupta, student at UCL. Welcome, Shreya. How are you? Hi, thank you for such a nice welcome. I'm doing good. How are you? I am doing well, and thank you so much for joining from UK. And so, how has your journey so far at the university and at UK, if I talk about? Okay, so the journey has been a total roller coaster ride for me. Like, it's been my first time living outside my home. So, of course, it's a mix of entire emotions, whether it be happy, whether it be sad, whether it be adventurous, everything is happening at the same time, I would say. Considering and talking particularly about UCL, it's actually once in a lifetime opportunity for me and I've been trying my best to make the best out of it so far it has been very nice it's been rigorous I have to work day in day night there have been assignments lining up deadlines to chase but overall overall it's been a great learning experience for me academically as well as personally correct so you're getting that experience for which an international students go abroad, that exposure, which is important. And I think it's really important to be accommodating to that exposure, which you are, correct? That, that's totally right. You have to be at your best adapt, adaptable self if you are going out. Correct. You just and, need to be ready for every change. Yeah. And I believe it's almost like four to five months that you have been there, right? Yes, it's been four months. Yesterday, it was four months. <laughs> so that's really new. So uh, are you still exploring the city or the country or, you know, now you know in and out over there where you are and in London, if I talk about? Of course, of course not. London is like huge. So you cannot ever know in and out about London. There are a few things which like I know by heart now, like the area where I am living in, I know that area in and out. I don't need to use Google Maps or any other thing. But of course, I need to talk about London, which is like a huge city. I'm still taking my time to, you know, process everything and learning new things every day. Great, great. Now, sure, there is a conception and which is not wrong, absolutely, that uh, studying abroad is a very expensive affair. How did you plan your study abroad journey? What funding option did you took? Did you, did you got any scholarship? Did you got any loans or what? Yes, of course. Um, studying abroad is actually a very costly affair and it requires the right financial planning right from the start to make sure that you land up yourself at the right place when you're here and you're not in a messed up position. So considering my finance options, my options have always been like either it would be a loan and an educational loan or it would, of course, be the funding from my parents. I took up a loan uh, because I think there was a certain amount like I'm pretty sure there's a certain amount that needs to be shown during the visa process. So my funding has been mainly two types. One is the loan, which is approximately 20% of my entire tuition plus living fee. And the rest is the funding from my parents. And uh, thankfully, I got the scholarship opportunity from University Living as well, for which like, I am truly thankful to. So these were my funding options. You got scholarship because your work towards society was impeccable. So kudos to that. Thank you so much. Contra uh, it's, it's always said, now if you do good, it never goes. Uh, you know, waste. Absolutely. Yes. it all good to always turn around and comes back to you. Great. Now, masters in management is a very uh, different program. I'll say that it's very popular among uh, students, but there are a lot of ambiguity around it that anybody can do it. There is a, some prerequisite course required. So what does this course exactly entail at UCL if I talk about and what is the eligibility criteria for this? Uh, if I talk particularly about UCL, like just focusing on UCL, when I came like the previous intake, um, UCL had scrapped off GMAT because of the COVID scenarios, but I believe like still have to check online. I think UCL is now demanding GMAT from the students. If not only that, as is like a compulsory thing which needs to be there, along with a very, very strong SOP and LOR. So when 
like the journey goes as follows like your sop and lor should be on point and it should be like really nice and should outstand from the other students who are applying for the same university after that they take into consideration your academic achievements for ucl i think if i talk about in terms of cgpa it was approximately 8.3 8.4 cgpa for your undergrad and then an ielts result which i think they just keep changing every year for my year it was 7.5 overall so these are the academic criteria and talking particularly about ucl it does not really require a work experience although i did have one year of work experience but i i think that just added it to my profile yeah that's uh, add as a like uh, bonus point because you come from a practical knowledge that's right that definitely helps great you did uh, talk about uh, the academic requirements and others but i want to understand what modules does this course cover and is there it is this different from an indian context so my particular reason of choosing ucl msc management course was because it was offering me a lot of different modules as compared to other universities so i come from a business and management background academically as well as professionally and a lot of universities other universities which i was considering in the uk the thing was i was seeing a sort of a repetitive course modules as compared to my undergrad but that was not the case with ucl if i talk broadly about the subjects that are being taught i could see that you know they are going in depth about how the business and management really works what are the requirements and not only theoretically the best part is i think it goes with every university of uk if i'm not wrong and as far as i've heard from my friends that it gives you a very practical approach towards life by giving some hands down very nice assignments or case studies or on site projects to work on so you see i like particularly until now has offered me some real deep insights into the industries in the market by you know going into subjects like operations finance which of course i have a background of but not that deep and practically so yes it is very different from india it does add the uh, practical knowledge does add uh, extra knowledge and expertise to your case but yeah different different case assignments and case studies do help a lot with the future aspect now while we are on this topic i would have taken this question later but now while we are on the subject was modules the only reason that you selected ucl or is there any other reason uh, which makes ucl different from other uk universities compared to your with respect to your course sorry uh there there have been particular reasons why i chose ucl firstly of course the ranking it's like number 8 university in the world which i was very much inclined to secondly the location as well it is like ucl main campus is in bloomsbury which is with the other universities as well but considering i am doing masters right now and i plan to have a good nice corporate job after i like end my university the other loca- the other factor was the location so ucl school of management is located in canary wharf which is like a corporate hub of uk so i wanted to get that experience and i just wanted to see how things really work and i have been able because of the location been able to make some really nice contacts in the industry which let's see if it would help me or not but currently i just wanted to get that experience and like i spoke to a lot of people before like making sure i want to go to ucl by connecting with them on linkedin who were like alumni of ucl so they were the people from whom i got to know the real insights and how things really look like what are the modules how has their experience been so far so like i was very content with everything and that is why i just went ahead and like went ahead with ucl so it sounds like that you did your homework and research pretty well in advance to take the course absolutely. which is absolutely like that's how everyone should go about the planning uh, any study abroad mm-hmm. journey sorry yeah whenever you're planning you should go like this of course of course because you're putting in so much of financial things it's, it's a huge investment basically it should not be just on a bill that okay i would just want to go study but that should not be the case there right, should always right. be a proper thought process research and of course will to study over there because right, they want to accommodate so many changes and i'm pretty sure she will highlight that going forward in this session that uh, your life turns upside down very true very true it makes a different person altogether 
Yeah. So right now, when we are on the subject like of person, how UCL has helped you to grow as a person? Um, first of all, it has taught me time management, which I was like very bad at. So back home, it used to be like a few things on my plate, which I had to deal with. But right now I have to deal with like my whole university and master's is rigorous. And secondly, like I have to look after my food, my meals, my everything. So personally, yes, it has taught me how to manage my own time, how to make sure that, you know, I plan my things. Like it has taught me micromanagement in a very nice way that I break up things in a day. It has taught me how to plan things so that, you know, whenever the red line is nearby, I don't have to rush for it. Or I don't have to become a person like, oh my God, everything is piled up on me last minute. So yes, uh, I have personally seen a lot of good changes in me. So I'm happy about it. And all these changes are good changes. So of course it makes sense. Like yes, the new true. Shreya, the future Shreya, we're going to do all her dreams. <laughs> nice. Yeah, That's nice. The UCL and every university abroad, I, I, we have heard they have amazing clubs and amazing opportunities, amazing, you know, drives keep on happening, events keep on happening. So what kind of clubs have you joined or, and would you like to suggest others to join in universities, especially if I talk about UCL in your case, with respect to career objective as well and personal interest? All right. Um, so like I did go to this club fair, which happened in the first week when I was here and there was this opening week and everything. But like I knew that my goals would demand a lot of my time and a lot of my efforts. I did not go for a lot of clubs that I intended to join. But yes, I'm a part like I like I planned on a few clubs which would help me, you know, grow professionally as well. Like I could not go for a lot of leisure clubs right now because masters, but if there are any undergrad people who are going ahead with, it is always a good idea to join clubs and societies because that is where you meet a lot of people who become your friends and eventually connections later on. So currently, like I have just focused on the business clubs because that is where my academic field is and that is where I professionally want to be in the near future. Makes sense. Makes sense. And what kind of activities happen in these clubs just for our viewers? Um, for the business clubs, if I talk about specifically, there are a lot of tech talk events or events where panelists come in and they give you a hands down experience on how the industry looks like and what you need to improve when so that you are ready for the industry, where you are ready for the future and to face everything. Not only this, I think UCL School of Management particularly has held a lot of seminars and webinars wherein people from the industry come in, they help you with your interviews, they help you with your mock CVs. They're the people who are currently working. So getting insights from them is like, I think, really helpful. Right, right. It does make sense. Like people who are working right now currently getting their hands dirty in the current market right. scenario and they, they can give the best insights they can give you the valuable lessons that you might need. Or again, these are the life case studies that you go through on a regular basis. Of course, totally agreed. Great. So Shreya, it's had been five months, but you have planned your study abroad journey like a little long back, I'll say. So what advice would you like to share with students who are planning their study abroad journey like right now if, I, if we talk about? Okay. So firstly, it is important to know what course you are doing and to see which universities are the best or can give you the required experience that you want. So selecting universities like the first number one task, which of course would be very difficult because when I personally started it, I got lost. And I was like, there are so many good universities, which one to go, which one to not go. But then again, there are different factors and everybody has their own preferences. So it is important that you know your preferences and then you can list down basically my pride. What I did was I prioritized my universities. And then as soon as the applications opened up, I started applying for them. Also, if like there are the, the requirements of the university are always listed on their web pages. So you can always be prepared beforehand. Like I knew that UCL didn't want a GMAT and it wanted IELTS. So I started preparing for my IELTS and you can always score well if you start preparing for the examinations. 
So that is the number one thing to list down and do stand on the requirements. And secondly, be prepared with your SOPs and NORs because that is something which each and every university requires. It depends on the quantity of LORs they require, but they would definitely require. And the last, and but I would not say the least important, but also very important factor is the financial planning because you need to know where you are going, where you're spending the money. And of course, if you are being self-funded, then it's important for you to prepare a budget and just show it to your parents. I think it even helps them to know that you're ready for it. So I think, yeah, that's it. Over right, there. right. So you mentioned pretty well that uh, it gets very overwhelming when you are searching through universities because all universities are doing great. And then you are going there for a particular course and maybe there are two, three universities doing particularly well in that uh, of course, mm. so it becomes really overwhelming. But I think Shreya has already pointed out the approach in a funnel manner. So uh, these are the things that matter a lot. Of course, finances matters. But if you are able to get a scholarship, it can help you a lot in other manners. So your finances can be mitigated over there. There are other ways to uh, overcome the financial challenge, but you need to be very clear about the course that you're going about, the university you're going. Check the alumni network, check how the people are placed, what kind of modules are they covering and others. I think these pointers, if these are the main headings and then there are some headings to it, which if you want more detail into it, just reach out to on our community and we'll arrange another session with Shreya soon about it and other ambassadors also. So we can do that. And I'm pretty sure they'll be happy to share their valuable insight over Moving forward, I didn't realize it almost wrapping up. We're almost near the time. So before we do, there is this conception that apartments are better than student housing. And a lot of student, we all are aware that there is a student accommodation crisis going on across, uh, you know, globe, if I talk about especially Europe. So a lot of students think that accommodation is the last thing, you know, we land over then and we'll figure it out but you sorted out your accommodation pretty well in advance you're living in a student housing apartment right now which is bbsa like you know what difference did you saw in these two like apartments and student housing what is the difference exactly uh in the buildings and does it really make sense or it's okay to just land over there and book an apartment um of course not it is never okay to first land in a different country altogether and you don't even have a place to stay with. it does not sound right to me and very practical of course so currently I am living in a student accommodation and I've always wanted to live in a student accommodation of course after doing my research because student accommodations are something you know you don't have to worry about them you don't have to worry about your bills you don't have to worry about what if you know, your heating breaks down, like for example, it happened with me today. So there are people ready for it. You can just you just have to go down at the reception. So when you're managing your studies, when you're managing yourself, the last thing that you want to manage is additional bills or additional problems. And trust me, there are a lot of problems when it comes to housing. And if you're living in a student accommodation, they there are people to sort it out like literally 24-7 they they have their own deadlines too so i can hands down say it is always a better idea to live in a student accommodation than a private apartment in my opinion and as far as i have seen and also when it comes to private apartments there are landlords that you have to deal with which i have been seeing with my friends there have been people that i have interacted with who came to uk and then they figured out, started to figure out their accommodation you know and eventually they either end up paying extremely high prices or they don't have a place to stay for like very long and then moving with three four luggages from one place to another is totally chaotic so yes i did sort my student accommodation again it was through university living which again i'm very thankful for it was a very smooth journey for me and the accommodation is also very nice so yes it is always always a better idea to have your housing in hand and as soon as you decide your university even if you do not i i'm, I'm sure there are a lot of things which can be taken into consideration but yes student accommodation is always a better idea and second it is always always better to pre-plan things right so pre-planning is really important and if you plan your accommodation also ahead of time you don't wait for last minute bookings you can get better deals and cheap accommodation affordable accommodation i would say so again thank you Shriya, for selecting university living for your accommodation journey we <laughs> really happy to help time. you with that now you're living in the most expensive city of the world i can say new york london yeah. 
they are like hubs and they are very expensive and you're living in one of such cities london so how are you managing your cost of living what pattern are you seeing what exactly is the cost of living in london if i talk about as an international student and if you have some tips to you know manage their expenses that would be great so um i would say that your finance or your budgeting depends on how you prefer to spend things it generally depends on individual to individual uh, if i talk about myself i could see my massive spending happening on either outings it's basically food whether it be grocery or whether it be going out so that is the that is the trend i have seen so far in like four five months since i've been here but how and there are months when financial things get a little overwhelming again because you know you don't expect to spend so much but eventually you end up spending so much so how i'm managing is it like i have made my whole budget for the month like i started doing it like a month back so let's see how it goes in the future so it's always important to make a budget for your groceries if you're cooking on your own which i am doing so i have to make a budget for my groceries my travel and my going out my leisure activities and i ha- i need to make sure that i stick to the budget so that whatever budget that i have set for the entire month or week however i'm going however i'm going about it it's like a tag to so budget just just plain budgeting so budget is the key for everything i'll say everything everything hands down it's great and and i'm happy that you you said that you have recently started so in the first 3 months you realize okay no i can't eat out <laughs> no, i can't just buy i have to figure it out some way exactly right right <laughs> right right does make sense okay now i want this to understand this this happens with a lot of international students did you convert it pounds to in inr once you landed over there did you did this mistake <laughs> always it's not a mistake it's just a habit <laughs> it's just you a habit not <laughs> it's just a habit and when I you think, see like and i think if you, yeah, once you do that conversion that gives a shoot in your bp you know, what is i mean like no i could not buy it <laughs> yeah how much i'm spending on apple man <laughs> exactly exactly yeah that is something that i think everyone does even yeah, my friends everybody do. does but it is always advisable not to do this for your own not to do it uh, yeah for your better heart rate right? so don't do this guys of uh, you know start <laughs> or do at your own risk guys <laughs> great yeah, now yeah, thank yeah. you so much shreya for joining us here before we bid adieu to each other for this platform any two cents of final advice for any students who is planning to study abroad regardless of any country they are targeting to um firstly just to know what university that you're going to please don't go just because your friends are going there or you think that it is good do your own research and plan everything whether it be financials whether it be university or whether it be accommodation it's important to plan everything else you'll be stuck in a bad place just just that yes it's a beautiful journey to enjoy so research and plan because of the two words that uh, shreya would like you to bid adieu on on this note we'll be closing our session thank you so much for joining us today we hope you found it useful looking forward to seeing you guys next friday 5 pm stay tuned to our social media handles for more information thank you so much shreya and i hope that uh, viewers who are watching this they also research and plan like you did and yeah all the best with your journey going forward thank you so much it was a pleasure same here thank you Thank <music> you.